Well, hello there. Welcome back to training. This is GitHub Foundation Certification Exam Review, and my name is Tim Warner. Why would you care about the GitHub Foundation Certification? Well, in the GitHub marketing literature, it says that the cert validates our skills on GitHub collaboration and contribution, including product knowledge, Git basics, and repository workflows. All very true. I have earned this cert. At this point, I have four of the five certs. And I'm a very happy camper. I absolutely love the GitHub ecosystem. The GitHub Foundation cert is an entry-level cert, no prerequisites. It's intended to get people getting into the tools at GitHub, collaborating. Whether you're a dev or not, please let me state that. That said, I've put together a list of free study resources in a public gist, timw.info foundations. That's a good short link to remember. Let's tackle the certification overview. GitHub intentionally priced the GitHub Foundation certification exam aggressively at $49 USD per attempt. That's in contrast to the other GitHub exams, which are $99 USD. And then Microsoft, different company, different vendor, admittedly, they go for $99 USD for their 900 series tests and $265 USD for their associate and expert. What's different, though, besides the lower price with GitHub Foundations, is that it's the only GitHub cert that's non-proctored. That means you don't have to deal with a PSI live proctor and all of that overhead. You can schedule to take the exam anytime. You don't have to book a particular date or time, although you do still use the secure browser and you'll still need to have your exam area secure. I use the bathroom in my home. The exam is 75 multiple choice questions over two hours. In my opinion, you have no problem with the time because we're not talking about case studies or hands-on assessments. You can see on the right a screen capture of the GitHub Foundation's PDF. Definitely study this. This is your source of authority. There are seven domains in the exam. As you can see, the text is probably small. 22% is Git and GitHub, obviously, but the Git might be a big surprise. You have to have at least strong beginner Git CLI skills, which I know is a decision that's going to alienate some customers. But given how GitHub is built foundationally on Git version control, it makes sense that you have to have that ground level expertise. Or if not expertise, let me just call it familiarity. More on the cert, you earn a Credly digital badge to showcase your achievement. I really love Credly because it provides a verification method where if you need to present that you have this cert, it's a definitive proof where both GitHub and Credly, which is owned by Pearson, back you up. And yes, you can see on the right side of this slide that I earned my GitHub Foundations on November 9th, 2024, and it expires in three years, November 9th, 2027. GitHub hasn't yet published research requirements because the certs are really still quite new. Register. Yeah, this is an important point. One issue with GitHub certs, the fact that they're early days, is the navigation in the GitHub cert web pages is pretty tough. You can get confused easily. Go to my registration link, timw.info slash register, and that'll take you to where you need to go to become eligible. And eligibility means just linking your GitHub ID into the PSI system. It's, it's really kludgy. Just take my word for it. Use that registration link when you're ready to book your exam. Other than the PDF, what other things can I give you in terms of what to study while steering well clear of violating our candidate agreement? The Git CLI, but also GitHub navigation bar features, basically in a repo, go across the top bar, go into settings. You need to own the repo. Turn everything on. <laughs> and the focus is on knowing the hows and whys of the key GitHub products and collaboration features. Obviously, issues and pull requests are central, but we also get into projects, believe it or not. We get into action workflows a little bit. We get into repo visibility and governance quite a bit, actually. So therefore, I really need you to not just look in the docs and not just read the conceptual stuff on Git, GitHub, but also practice with GitHub Web, GitHub Mobile, and get accustomed to using Visual Studio Code. As I said, GitHub Foundations isn't only for developers. You might be a documentation specialist and you're in GitHub all the time. You might be a graphic artist, a marketing person. You could be a human resources professional looking for dev metrics. You could be an IT tech recruiter and you really lean into profiles so you can track and see achievements and look for skill sets. There's so much there, including VS Code. So much so I wanna devote a separate slide segment to this application. Now I've had some learners and consulting clients 
push back and say, why are you evangelizing VS Code? Our devs, our people use other tools. That's fine. But we need to look at the truth of the matter, that VS Code, which is Microsoft's free and open source cross-platform code editor, eminently extensible, runs in a browser, runs practically anywhere. VS Code is integrated deeply in the GitHub ecosystem. Witness, code spaces, dev containers, there's Visual Studio Code for the web. If you've heard of VS Code.dev, there's also GitHub.dev. All of these products and features rely on VS Code. And even going further, with GitHub Copilot, the GitHub Copilot chat extension in VS Code is where it all happens first. And yes, it's a bit controversial because the world uses other IDEs, but if they are centering their work on GitHub, at the least they're going to be in the GitHub cloud. So the GitHub web experience is also very much on the menu. And one thing you want to be careful of is you do need to know navigation paths. The questions can show that it's early days. This is just me speaking as a 30-year veteran of IT certification. Hope some of this extra detail that I'm filling in is helpful to you. Use VS Code, if nothing else, to get smart on the exam and to be more proficient in GitHub. And if you love it beyond that, like I do, awesome. Now, some specific test-taking tips. The AI-generated image at right is actually not a joke. You'll want to validate your ID in your testing environment, even though it's non-proctored, because you're going to use their secure browser. Their secure browser is a thick client application, Works well on Windows and Mac OS, though it's about 150, 170 megs, so make sure you've got some bandwidth. During the exam, stay calm, take notes. I mean, notes, you can't bring anything in but your exam. That's why I like to, or your computer, rather. That's why I like to take my laptop into my bathroom. I mean, cognitive notes. As you're taking the test, breathe. Experience it fully. Because if you don't pass it, you're really going to rely on your memory so that you can fix any errors that you know you made the first time through. So stay alert, stay aware, and review thoroughly while you're going through the test. In my opinion, again, speaking as a professional in this domain, this certification is really good because it boosts your skills practically for GitHub Enterprise Cloud Collaboration. And I tell my consulting clients and learners all the time that this certification is valuable for any IT pro who does work in GitHub. And the skill set, even if you don't want the cert, grab that PDF study guide and make sure you're smart on all those skills because GitHub did a fantastic job aggregating how people use. I mean, they know how people use their product and they use their product themselves. So lean on that. It's very practical. And lastly, the GitHub Foundations was intended, is intended to have a lower barrier of entry in terms of cost and requirements. Some suggestions for improvement to the GitHub CERT team, simplify and unify all of your exam materials. When a learner goes to the PSI store and sees errors and warnings like you see in the screenshot, it makes for friction, reduces our trust. The language needs a heavy overhaul to be more precise and actionable and work higher at the level of Bloom's revised taxonomy. And lastly, I hope the exam will eventually have less reliance on simple, again, low-level fact recall. You do need to know JSON from time to time in GitHub, yeah. And you definitely need to know the Git CLI, the core commands, but there's a limit. Key takeaways and next steps. Where do you go after you clear the GitHub Foundation certification? I would recommend, again, all of what I'm telling you, please understand I'm speaking only for myself, and I welcome you to take or leave any of my thoughts or opinions. I offer them to you freely with no expectation. I would say, unless you have another cert in mind next, look at GitHub Copilot. Why? It's sort of like why I said get smart on VS Code, even if that's not your main code editor. Generative AI skills apply across all DevOps roles. You can access all study materials, as I'd mentioned, at timw.info slash foundations, and we can connect at techtrainertim.com. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot for watching.